Good morning. I'm Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD from El Camino College, Torrance in California. Today I'm going to talk about include guards in C++ object-oriented programming. Uh, this concept needs to be clarified with some examples. So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> They're also called sometimes header guards. So you could see two terms being used, include guards and header guards. Okay, in big C++ software project, you may have many, many classes. And one class may become data member of another class. And one class becoming data member of another class, that technology is called composition relationship. It's used very heavily. <clears throat> and you have used composition relationship extensively in past when you use C++ string class in your the classes and structs that you designed. <clears throat> Imagine a soft C++ software developed for a school at university. University or school will have students. So we will need a student class and it will also have students that work part-time for the university. Therefore, we'll need a student employee class. <clears throat> and to facilitate design, we'll make a student class as a data member of student employee class. This is done very often to avoid uh, code replication. <clears throat> Rest of it we are going to show you in the Xcode and and the need for include guard in our Xcode. <laughs> and don't worry if you have Visual Studio because similar behavior will be followed in Visual Studio as well. So on to the Xcode. <clears throat> so we go to Xcode. We have a We're going to write a student class. I'm not going to use all the includes right now, but it's going to have a student's name at least. So I have this string and I might be doing some input and output. <clears throat> so I have the IO stream and here the student class, private data member string name. And I'm not showing the whole class. I've shown that in other examples. And it might have more private class members. And in the public area, it would have public class members. That's how you're used to writing uh, classes. So we're showing a skeleton of that. And then we write this to an employee class. Notice in order for me to have student as a data member of this student employee class, I'm going to have to include student.h in this one. Okay. So I include that. <clears throat> and if different people are, different software engineers are generating student.h and student employee.h, they may test and include their own IO stream which will be used in this class somewhere. So we include the student.h because we are including student as a data member and we put another data member salary and there will be more members in private area and of course we'll have constructors and other member functions in the public area. So we designed this class and I understand I'm not separating header and implementation file here because I'm only going to really want to talk about include guards. So just focusing my attention on one topic. Okay, then we go to our main function. This is our main function here. And so what we're going to have to do in, in the way of in, including is we're going to have to call include if I if my main function is going to talk about is going to have code for both student and student employee, I'm going to have to include both of those.
so I'm gonna have to include student sorry dot h and I'm gonna have to include student employee dot h all right let's look at the code in main function <clears throat> so main function I'm in declaring two objects student object s1 is an employee dot object e1 and I'm doing the hello world now you can say why would this work well because we already included IO stream using namespace std here in the student class so when we are including this whole file this include is being done so we expect this to work of course so <clears throat> let's compile this program and all of a sudden I'm getting this error here this output is from the previous program so it doesn't mean it compiled so let me click here and it says here I don't know if you can see it but actually you should be able to see it here it says redefinition of student and that's a bit puzzling because if you go to file section I only have one student file and one definition so you can say where did this redefinition come from why is it saying redefinition because you have defined it only once well the problem is that you define class student here once and then in the student employee because you have to include a student as a data member of in the class student employee for the design purpose and then you are including student dot h here so meaning of that is that take this whole class and copy and paste as if you did this that's the meaning of the include by the way that you go to the second class and in place of this class <coughs> then you copied and pasted this one student class and then when we are including in the main function the student employee and the student dot h like this then once the student class was defined here and then second because as a result of the nature of including this this entire file got included again and that this student class got defined the second time now <clears throat> in large software projects where each part of the software is te tested separately as a component this is unavoidable you can't really do it you can't avoid this doing this so how can we tell compiler that if something got defined once and that got included in another file not to include this second definition like not to include this definition when we use the student dot h here when we include the student dot h here okay so let me go back and undo how do we do undo okay <clears throat> well actually i'll just okay let go back with different edit command z No, not this one, not in this file. Go here. Command Z, Command Z. Oh, okay, it's not working. Okay, now it works. <clears throat> so you, we're back to the way we wrote classes. Student.h here. 
this will disappear once we do include guards. Uh, so an employee h here, and of course, we have our main function here. Okay, and I can prove to you again that this error is still there. And if I go to my student class, this redefinition error is still there. Okay, so how do we avoid this problem? And this could be a huge problem in large software projects. So C++ has a technology called include guards. And that's how it works. That entire definition of this class has to be included inside these bound defined macros. And the, the way macros are placed is it says pound if n def and it's called if n def macro as you can see here. Uh, the name of this file which is student.h and you can write anything you want but for the sake of identification I put the class name actually the file name in all caps dot replaced by underscore and the h after that and meaning of that is that if student.h is not defined then define it define so macro is started here this is another macro this is not if and def macro this is define macro and then anytime you start with if there has to be an end if so pound, pound and if so <clears throat> entire class code including the header files up to the end of the class and if there were like more member functions or something after this they have to be included in this pound defined macro as well so your whole class should be sitting between these two lines of code and this end if code okay so we have to do this for every class that we write only in the header file if you have separate implementation of cpp file you do not need to put include guards in cpp file okay so one more time you do not need to do include guards in cpp file only in header files so we do the same thing here in the student employee class we put a pound if and def macro we take the class uh, file name just make it all upper case just for the sake of convenience underscore h then define student employee underscore h and then we have to add our macro uh, and if and that's because for every if there has to be an end if paired that's it we're done and if you go to main function we got an error earlier in fact you're seeing the error here redefinition of student that problem will now disappear okay i haven't changed any code here but it will no longer have that error and it says will succeeded and my error disappeared <clears throat> that's the magic of include cards so basically these there are three lines in the include guard. First, we say if and def student dot student underscore h, and the technology here is to take the file name, 
dot in the file name is replaced by underscore and the h which is the file extension only apply to header files so you don't need to put in cpp files so if this class has not been defined then define it and then end if and <coughs> when we go to here that previous pound define include guard kicks in and when we include it again it will actually prevent second definition when this file is included <coughs> then it will only be defined once when i include these here it's not going to include student.h twice it will just include only once that's how the include guard works okay there's one more include guard in microsoft world called pragma and you can add that if you're using visual studio only this one will be needed but it's a great idea to include pound define and pragma both in all the header files so we're going to add that as well. And you'll see that nothing would have changed. Nothing would have changed. And our include guard works just the same. So basically include both pragma and pound define. That's it. Thanks a lot for watching the include guards in C++ object-oriented programming.